Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at Billions of men share a Y chromosome mutation called M168. Could M168 be Adam? There's only one problem. On the Kenyan island of Pate, Spencer Wells found one man who doesn't fit. His Y chromosome doesn't have the critical mutation. It's a crucial clue. And he's not the only one. There are others who are not descended from M168. So he can't be Adam. M168 is far down the tree, but not its base. And the Y chromosome from the odd man out on Pate gives us the final piece of our puzzle. The man's lineage originates in East or South Africa. Comparing this Y chromosome to thousands of men from all over the world reveals a critical discovery. These mutations originating in Africa appear on every Y chromosome in every man in the world today. These are the universal mutations we've been looking for. We followed the DNA trail all the way to the bottom of the tree. Every branch leads to one man, one Y chromosome. There must have been one man who gave rise to all men alive today. He is the ultimate super ancestor. He is Scientific Adam. One of his descendants was M168. All the Y chromosomes in the world trace back to this one African man. He is Scientific Adam. Wells believes the pattern of African Y chromosomes puts his birthplace somewhere in the Great Rift Valley region of East Africa, perhaps Tanzania or Ethiopia. He thinks this is scientific Adam's homeland, his Garden of Eden. Genetics can date the ancient Y chromosome mutations to calculate the age of scientific Adam. Wells believes he was born around 60,000 years ago. It sounds ancient, but it means our search for a common ancestor has not led us all the way back to a time of ape men, or even to primitive beings like Homo erectus. Compared to the billions of years of human evolution, we've found Adam in the recent past. Wells knows scientific Adam existed, when he lived, even where he might have come from. But who was he? What made him the super ancestor of all men today? And what did he look like? The Adam that's emerging is not who we might have thought. Michelangelo's famous painting shows God giving life to a European. The critical discoveries of where and when Adam lived prove he could not have looked like this. For the first time, it's possible to paint a new portrait of Adam based on science. Facial reconstructions have shown what other ancient humans might have looked like. We have images of earlier beings like Homo erectus and the ancient prehuman known as Lucy. These faces are all based on fossil skulls, but there are no intact skulls from Adam's time. There is a man who can give a face to Adam, even without his skull. Frank Bender calls himself the recomposer of the decomposed. He's a forensic artist, a specialist at bringing the dead to life. 
Bender works regularly for police departments around the world, giving faces to human remains, even when the skulls are almost missing. The whole one half of the skull was burnt away, so I only had half a skull to work from. And I built up this reconstruction, and she was identified through the help of my work. Now, Bender will use this talent to bring Adam to life. Adam's skull is missing. But Bender will base his reconstruction on the closest skull he can find. And that brings him to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Gary Sawyer is an expert on reconstructing prehistoric faces. He believes this skull, found at a site called Kafsa, is a good basis for Adam. Because he combines modern features with still some uh, archaic features in a lower forehead or frontal and good size brow ridges. The Kavza skull is about 100,000 years old. Adam's skull would be much more modern. Bender will have to estimate what thousands of years of evolution would have done to Kavza man's appearance. First, he uses his forensic skills to figure out what Kavza man looked like. Wow, that came out. Must blue perfect. Bender can determine his features from the structure of his skull. The shape of the cheekbones, the line of the jaw, the width of the nose, the size of the chin. Kavza man is 100,000 years old. To construct a face for Adam, Bender has to update this portrait by 40,000 years. As humans evolved, the shape of our skulls changed, brow ridges shrank, the forehead became more vertical, the chin more prominent. Adam should be almost halfway between this ancient man and humans like us. Bender needs to find that midpoint. He needs a modern face to compare to the ancient skull. But not just any face. He wants someone whose lineage traces most directly back to Adam. In East Africa is a little known tribe called the Hadzabe. Spencer, Dano. Their DNA links them almost straight back to Adam. They give us a glimpse into his world. And they point to what Adam could have looked like. Now Frank Bender can show us what he might have looked like. His goal is not just to sculpt Adam, but to reveal his personality. I tried to get into his head just like I would a fugitive. Intuition is the binder between art and science. It's the part that pulls it all together and gives it that life, that spark. I picture him very much alive and with a lot of the basic feelings that we have today. Confidence one point, insecurity at another. Finally, Wells comes face to face with the man he's been searching for. A new portrait of the common ancestor of every man today. Adam. Without a skull, we can't know for sure what Adam looked like. But a combination of genetic evidence, Bender's forensic skills, and cutting edge computer software suggest he looks something like this. Thousands of years after the Bible, and hundreds of years after Michelangelo, we have a whole new face for Adam. I like the expression, he's got a very forceful look. He's intent on something, maybe taking over the world. You know, you begin to get perhaps an insight into why these guys won out and why this guy's our ancestor.
Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact,